Hey all, what's up? My name is Taylor. Welcome back to the channel. Or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you. Today I want to talk about the MacBook Pro 16 inch, specifically my MacBook Pro 16 inch. I really haven't done that many videos on this laptop. I've maybe done like two videos. I did the unboxing one and I did one where I explained what apps are best for your Mac. And I think it gives off the impression that I wasn't really impressed with this laptop and that could not be further from the truth. Uh, I have it here and let me tell you, I love this laptop. Um, this is the best computer I've ever used and I have used it almost daily for seven months now. That's how long I've had this. And that is saying a lot considering all my life I've been a hardcore PC enthusiast. Like I would have never thought that I would be using a Mac almost daily. And sure enough, this one, this one I'm using daily. So I wanna to talk to you guys about what I really like about this laptop. There's a lot. And also what I would like to see in future iterations of this, because while it is a fantastic laptop, it's not perfect. I don't think it ever will be perfect, but I'm gonna talk about some things that I think Apple could improve on. So if that sounds good, then let's dive in. Quick disclaimer as well, this is just my personal review. No one's paying me to make this review. I'm not sponsored. These are my own personal opinions. They could be wrong. So if you don't agree with them, then that's fine. Okay, the first thing I wanna talk about is this screen. This screen is amazing. It impresses me every single day. It's a 16 inch mini LED panel. It's got 500 nits of brightness in the standard dynamic range and 1600 nits of brightness in the high dynamic range, which is mind blowing, 1600 nits. That is insane. It has a resolution of 3456 by 2234, which comes in at a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. The 16 by 10 aspect ratio is the optimal aspect ratio for productivity in my opinion. And on top of all that, it's got ProMotion, which is Apple's variable refresh rate technology, which lets this monitor top out at a whopping 120 Hertz. And it is pretty smooth. I was a bit on the fence when ordering this, thinking that 16 inches was gonna be too large, but after seven months, I absolutely have no regrets. The 16 inches is totally worth it in my case for that larger screen. Consuming content on the screen is always a treat, especially when viewing HDR with the 600 nits and the deep blacks on this mini LED panel just make viewing content absolutely insane looking. The color accuracy of this display is really good, one of the best I've ever used, and that makes it the ultimate tool for my productivity workflow, which is mainly editing videos or photos. I usually edit on my 27 inch Apple Studio display because it has a lot of real estate, but I always move my finished product over to the 16 inch panel just to verify that I have the colors correct and everything is looking nice. That's how good this panel is. The main reason I'm able to do all my creative work on this machine exclusively is because of the power coming out of this M1 chip. In my particular configuration, I opted for the M1 Max it's the 32 core GPU because I didn't want to leave any compromises on the GPU area. Where I did compromise though on was the 64 gigabytes max RAM that this machine can be configured with. I went with the 32 gigabyte configuration. Do I have any regrets with that decision? No. The 32 gigabytes have been more than enough for the workflow that I'm doing. I am editing on 4K XAVCS footage coming out of my Sony camera, and this laptop can handle it just fine for the YouTube videos that I'm making. Also, I'm editing large photos on the A7R4. These are like huge 60 megapixel files, and the M1 Max with 32 gigs and 32 cores of graphics power handles those images just fine. This is an also highly capable tool for building web applications. It scores top marks in JavaScript compilation and it is compatible with Docker, which runs phenomenally well on the Apple Silicon chip. 
Here, the M1 Max handled compiling the Babel library in just 26 seconds, which is pretty dang fast. It also works flawlessly with Java JVMs that are built for Apple Silicon, like OpenJDK 17 or 18. If you're looking for a laptop that can handle some of the most intensive photo and video editing and programming workloads, then the M1 16 inch MacBook Pro is gonna be one of the best options available, in my opinion. This is especially true if you're someone who needs mobility when getting work done and doesn't want to plug in the laptop often. In this area, the battery life on the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the Max chip has been really great. When editing photos or videos on this chip, I can get about two to two and a half hours of continuously heavy use. And when doing less intensive tasks like consuming content, the time is around eight to 10 hours before having to charge up, which is really good. And that's better than all laptops I've ever used minus the M1 uh, 13 inch MacBook Pro that had a little bit better battery life. And on top of that on standby, this laptop barely taps into any battery usage at all, just like the 13 inch M1. So I'm always confident when I set the laptop down and leave it that when I come back to it, I'm gonna have close to the charge that I had when I left it. Also, there's no loss in performance when using this laptop disconnected from power. So you get the same amount of power out of the Max chip as you would on the battery life. A big reason the battery life is so good on this laptop is because of the efficiency of that M1 chip. I'm running the Max version, like I said, and while the laptop can get pretty warm when using it heavily, it never gets uncomfortably hot and it's always something that I can use on my lap with no issues, even in intensive workloads. This is very much unlike my 15 inch MacBook Pro, which gets extremely hot while doing really anything at all. And it sounds like a jet engine. The 16 inch MacBook Pro only spins its fans when photo or video editing and when it does, it's barely audible. In addition to the more efficient chip, this laptop is thicker, so more air can travel through it, and it has a much improved exhaust system over the previous generation, which can get rid of that hot air more quickly. I imagine this is gonna allow for future hardware iterations of this laptop to excel, and the, it's going to increase the age of this laptop significantly, because those components are gonna heat up and wear over time. At least that's what I'm hoping and banking on. When it's time to charge up, I have the option of charging via USB-C, like on the previous generation of MacBook Pros, or I can use the new MagSafe 3 cable that this laptop comes with. That enables fast charging on the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. I also don't have to worry about the cord getting yanked out, totally safe there. In total, this MacBook Pro has one MagSafe connector, three USB-C ports, an SD card reader, a high impedance headphone jack, an HDMI port, and that's it. I said SD card reader. That's a lot of ports. Unlike the previous generation of MacBook Pro, I have a lot less port anxiety with this laptop. I make use of all the ports except for the HDMI port. I feel like Apple could have omitted the HDMI port in favor of maybe uh, USB-A port or maybe multiple USB-A ports. Uh, those are still really useful for a lot of the peripherals that I use. It isn't anything a dongle or adapter wouldn't be able to fix, but I still would have liked to see a USB-A on this. What's definitely nice to have is the SD card reader. This makes it so convenient to go directly from my camera to the computer without having to fish for an adapter or risk forgetting an adapter altogether, which is just not fun. I really hope Apple continues to iterate on this card slot and maybe even consider a CF Express card slot in the future since that seems to be the direction that a lot of cameras are going with higher bitrate video. Housing all these components is a beefy chassis that has rounded corners this time around and has a slightly thicker stance than the previous generation. I personally really like the build. The thickness feels nice to rest my palms on and it allows for better thermals and keyboard key travel. It also allows room 
for the resonance chambers, which makes the laptop audio sound really good compared to the previous generation laptops. This laptop is built like a tank while not being overly heavy, it's 4.8 pounds. The boxier design does pose a slight problem in my case though, and that is I can't fit it in my photography bag. I can fit my 15 inch MacBook Pro in there, barely, but because of those rounded corners on this and the slightly boxier design, I can't fit this in my camera bag. So whenever I travel, I have to throw it in my regular backpack. Apple have opted for their Magic Keyboard in this machine, which is the same keyboard found in the 2019 16-inch MacBook Pro and the M1 13-inch uh, MacBook Pro. It's a great keyboard. The keys feel nice and tactile while also having a good amount of travel. The removal of the touch bar is really nice. I don't miss the touch bar at all. I hardly ever used it. And it also has a larger escape key, which I find really nice. I do like the black backdrop on the keys, but I'm not totally sold that it looks better than the aluminum backdrop that was on the previous MacBook Pros. I kind of wish Apple would give some options to customize this so people who don't want the black backdrop can make that decision and people who want the aluminum backdrop, they can choose it if they want. That would just be a nice little cherry on top in the configuration tool. The touchpad is top of the line and feels like every other Apple touchpad. If you've used it, you know it's the best. There still is no laptop to date that can match or exceed it. The Windows laptops are getting closer, but they, it still can't compare. It's large, it has a very satisfying thunk sound when pressed down and the haptic motors activate. One thing I do wish to see in the future iterations of this laptop is a better Wi-Fi card. I have a one gigabit per second ethernet internet connection, really fast. And I can never get above 500 megabits per second download on the Wi-Fi or upload for that matter. It doesn't even come close to the full one gigabit per second. So whenever I'm working on projects that I need a fast connection, which is most of the time web programming, I am plugging this into the ethernet port that's on my Anchor dongle. Hopefully Apple puts in a faster Wi-Fi card in future iterations of this laptop. So what are my final thoughts on this machine? For me, all the features come together to blend into a computer that just works well for whatever task I throw at it. It exceeds my expectations and for $3,500, I would say this computer is an amazing value. If I were to go out and look for a laptop with the power I need to edit high resolution photos and, and 4K video, uh, while also having the best battery life and having an amazing screen, a mini LED high resolution 1600 nit screen, having really good sound out of the box and all while being nearly silent and never uncomfortable to use on my lap, if I were to look for that laptop right now, the only option is this laptop. This is the only laptop that meets all that criteria. No, this can't play AAA games. This isn't a thin and light laptop. It isn't capable of running Windows all that well. You'll have to use the ARM version of Windows. But that isn't the point of this machine. This MacBook Pro is the ultimate productivity and creativity machine, in my opinion, this is the machine for people who want to build, who want to create new things. After using this MacBook Pro nearly daily for seven months, I can easily say this is the best computer I've ever used. And if Apple can keep innovating on this, the future of computing looks very promising. I'm Taylor and thank you for sitting through and listening to this review. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this laptop. If you have this laptop, let me know what you think of it. I'm interested to hear your feedback. That's it for the review. I hope you have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to do that. Hit it right now. Hit, hit like if you made it this far, please. And if you want to see more content, please subscribe. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next one.